John, I'd like to pick up on the topic of the blood of Jesus Christ that we have been emphasizing in this particular episode. Isn't it interesting that when you stop to think of it, the Passover, which was instituted by God for the nation Israel, God said to the people, I want you to find a lamb. Every home should have a lamb. Now, if it was a very small home with few people, they could go in with a neighbor. But that lamb had to be killed because God says that one of the plagues is going to be this. I'm going to go throughout the land of Egypt and all those who do not have blood on their door, their firstborn son is going to die. If you know the story of the plagues, you know that this was the last plague, the horrors of what God did to Egypt because they would not allow the Israelites to go. But God said to the Israelites, if you take a lamb and you kill that lamb and you take some of the blood and you sprinkle it on your doorpost, when the angel of death goes through the land, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And that, by the way, is why it's called the Passover. Now, let's use our imaginations just for a moment. Think about that firstborn Israelite son. Perhaps he was rebellious. He might have been going through a time of depression. He might have been a very disobedient boy. Perhaps he was also a good boy at times. It did not matter. What mattered was whether or not his family had blood on the door. Now let's go to Egypt. There may have been a very good firstborn son who basically has kept all the rules. He's been a good boy. He's not caused any trouble for his parents. And that boy, that firstborn, would die. Why? There was no blood on their door. Do you understand that the real issue is whether or not you are trusting in Jesus Christ and his sacrifice, his blood? And there is such power in that blood, and it says, the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us from all sin. Well, if the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin, how many sins are left for baptism to take away? How many sins are the works that we might do? How many are they able to take away? When God decided to save us, he took all human goodness and put it on one side and says, unusable. If you're to be redeemed, I will do it completely and finally if you acknowledge your sinfulness and turn from your sins and turn to Jesus Christ and accept his sacrifice as your very own. And you can do that right now. I'm going to pray for you. And while I pray, you pray. Call upon the name of the Lord, the Bible says, and be saved. Father, I want to thank you so much that Jesus was willing to go through darkness so that we could walk in light. Thank you that he experienced rejection so that we could experience acceptance. Thank you, Father, that he went through this time of great agony, of separation from the Father, so that we might never have to be separated from our Father again. We pray that you might work in the lives of many who are listening, and may they come to saving faith in Christ, even as they call upon him right now. We ask in Jesus' name, amen.